and welcome back to Nancy Tobago. We're talking the NJ Conference 2018. I'm Urvashi Tawari Rupnarayan and on set with me I've got Mr. Norman Christie, Regional President of BPTT. Mr. Christie, as we continue, now the Prime Minister has said bring your plans and come. And I saw a map of your facilities earlier. Um, should robust on and offshore presence but i'd like to find out from you does bptt plan to bring cassia c um to tnt and what will be required to attract future plans to be brought to tnt not just from bp but from the broader sector uh, it's an excellent question related to actually local content benefiting from our spend and we certainly have a huge uh incentive to have more done in country than out of country but as I think everybody's heard us say multiple times, that you have to have the right environment, and we have to have the right environment that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prime Minister, as you mentioned, said that we should bring our platform blueprints and come, and that's a welcome statement. Mm -hmm. But for us to bring our blueprints and come, obviously we have to have a competitive environment. And you asked a question about collaboration earlier. Here is a case where actually we need collaboration across the industry for the platform fabrication industry to be a sustainable one in country. What does that mean? It means that companies like BP and other um, upstream and actually downstream operators in country have to work with the fabricator, they have to work with the community, with the unions, all of these actors within the industry have to come together for that common good which is what's good for the country. And what's good for the country is to remain competitive. There are lots of other offerings out there. We want Trinidad and Tobago to be the place that you want to do fabrication for installations like Cassia C. So exactly where BP is at this moment, we're actually in the planning stages for Cassia C. And we're looking at all our options. Local fabrication is one of the options that we're considering. But for that option to materialize, we have to have the right environment, a competitive environment for fabrication. And I believe that's actually very possible if collaboration works. If all of the players come together to create a competitive environment, then we can have fabrication in country. Well, let's talk a little bit about Angela and you on record as saying that you were disappointed that it was the first platform in over a decade not to be built in TNT. How did labor relations play in that? And if you could make an appeal, what, what would you say to the public? Yeah, I was really disappointed that we couldn't do Angela in fabrication in country because for the string of platforms that we did before, we did our fabrication here except for a portion of juniper which was also mm -hmm. fabricated abroad and, and and i wouldn't want to concentrate on one section of the industry that needs to collaborate the union or another i think we just need to realize that all sectors that are involved in bringing fabrication have to work together for the good of the country it's not good for the country when we have the expertise we have the facility that fabrication doesn't get done here. And there's no reason why it can't be done here, except for all of the parties coming together and seeing what's required for competitive fabrication and working towards that end. What are some lessons that you learned from the Angelin experience? I guess one big lesson is collaboration is hard work. But when you do it, it pays off. So I, th I think we missed the opportunity to pull all of the pieces together in time for Angeline. And Angeline, as we've said before, was on a clock. We had to get Angeline started because we need that production in 2019. We don't want to get into a situation where our production declines again. And so we didn't have the luxury of waiting until everybody got their act together. In the case of Angeline, we needed to get started. And we don't want to repeat that mistake going forward. We have the time now for everybody to come, to come together and actually, again, work towards one common objective. What's good for the country? We have the time to do that, and then we can bring fabrication back in country. But Not only for BP, by the way, but for other people to use that fabrication yard as well. But if we go back to Angela in a bit, I mean, BP did come under a lot of public scrutiny. There were a lot of comments in the media. There, there has been a negative impact. And how is the company recovering from that? Well, we, we're very focused. I know there's, there was a lot in the press. That didn't deter us from 
the objective that we needed to focus on, which was to, do, again, do what's good for the country. The country needs production. Angelin was the next best source of that production after Juniper. Mm -hmm. So there was no time for us to be distracted with all of the things happening on the side. Our singular focus was on how could we get this project required for the industry done, and that's what we did. Unfortunately, with that focus to do what's right, it couldn't accommodate fabrication here, and that's something we do not want to repeat. You know, Mr. Christie, I did take into consideration you're talking about the right environment, the right environment for production, the right environment for new investment, new projects. But what does um, something like the measure announced in the last budget as it refers to royalties, what does that do to the industry and especially to BPTT? Well, in isolation, the, the imposition of the 12.5% royalty doesn't have an adverse impact on the industry per se. That has to be seen though within the context of all the other taxes and all the other take. And I think when I speak about the environment, that needs to be seen in its totality. So if I look solely at the 12.5% royalty which was imposed, uh, companies can adapt and they can adapt to that 12.5%. There are still some details to be worked out, although it's been enacted. Yeah. But I wouldn't focus on the 12.5% as a negative thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. What I would say is we always have to be mindful of the 12.5% within a suite of other taxes and takes. And if that then gets non-competitive, mm -hmm. then we have a problem because investments will dry up and we'll be in an even worse situation than we saw when production declined. But there's a perception that BP didn't pay tax. Do you pay tax? Oh, we, play, we pay a tremendous amount of tax. Um, over the years, people just need to look back at the uh, EITI reports. It's mm -hmm. there in glowing figures. Did we have a decline in taxes? Yes, we did, as everybody else did when prices declined and production declined. And, and that has obviously adversely affected the country's revenue, and we recognize that. But again, it calls for collaboration to rebuild the tax take for the country. I actually take great pleasure in signing a tax check because it means that I'm making money. What transpired was the economy declined, oil companies felt the pressure and so tax revenue declined for the country. But we never stopped paying taxes. In fact, in 2017, I mentioned that production improved, our tax payments also improved by close to 45 percent. So we are paying taxes. We're paying more taxes now than we paid the year before. We never stopped paying taxes, but taxes did decline as a result of the environment. Mr. Christie, before we wrap up, I just want to take you up on, on one other thing. As far as your royalties are concerned, are you all still in discussions with government or have they completed? What is your position with that? Yeah, the, the, the royalty has actually been enacted, so the law, the, the law has actually been passed. Um, the conversations we're having about are about the mechanics of payment. So it's not a conversation about actually the imposition of the royalty as much mm -hmm. as the logistics of how this new law will actually work for the companies making those payments. As we close, would you like to just give us a, a, a tip or some feedback or just something to the public on collaboration? Absolutely. I think it's a great topic for the country to be discussing. I think it should be evident to all who are interested in the industry that the way to go forward is for us to work together. The competitive forces are outside and they are significant. If we're divided inside, we won't do as well as we should. If we are collaborating and we're cooperating internally, then we're actually fighting against the competitive forces outside. And Trinidad and Tobago can be a potent force if we actually pull together and do what we're supposed to do for the industry. Collaboration is key. We're talking the Energy Conference 2018. We now go to a quick break. Stay with us.